now and we moved locations just because they're out there watching football and so we're gonna go ahead and try to wrap this up kind of quickly but without skimping on the answers because we definitely want to fully answer the questions for you guys so they are finishing up eating some pizza and watching some football so I think they're good for a little bit yeah um, but yeah so let's go ahead and jump right back in to All kind right. of where we left off yeah where were we do you ever want to live somewhere other than Florida again someday so we do love Florida, but I think traveling is also in our blood. I don't know. So as you guys know, we're military, so we could potentially end up anywhere. Yeah. Um, and we are very used to change, and at least I am growing up like any, that. I mean, anywhere, and, right? overseas, um, Italy, yeah. Spain, I, we could end up anywhere, so who knows. So we actually tried to get over to either England or Germany, or mm -hmm. I'm not so crazy about Move into Spain. I would love to visit Spain, but as far as living, I would want to live probably, I would say either England or yeah. Italy. Yeah. yeah. Italy would be nice because you have the skiing and the water. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, it, right now, uh, unless something changes, we're at kind of the mercy of where the military wants to move us. So. Yeah. We'll see. I don't get much of a choice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did Chaz finish the barn door for the entertainment and dining room unit? I was so looking forward to seeing how that turned out. Did I miss it in the vlogs? No. So, as you guys know, we just actually finished that. Yeah. Yeah, I finished it today. So. Yeah. So, you guys finally, know we double filmed today. Oh, my today. gosh. <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah. That project took a long time. I'm sorry it took so long. But I'm really happy with how it turned out. So, turned out really hopefully good. you guys like it. Yeah. Can you make a grocery haul or a meal prep video? I love how healthy I'll eat. Oh, so thank you. Yeah, yeah I, we we try to eat healthy most of the time. We just had pizza for dinner tonight. <laughs> but Gee, most of the time, yeah. yeah, we try to eat pretty healthy. And yes, our plan is to do a grocery haul probably first thing in January in the new year. Yeah. And I also will be showing you guys... Um, what I eat in a day being pregnant in my third trimester and then Chaz always meal preps on Sundays mm -hmm. for his lunches for the week for work So we're gonna throw in some of that kind of stuff once yeah. the new year rolls around. Yeah. All right. Next question Love you guys had a question for Jess. You are a vegetarian. What are your reasons for that? Not hating I don't eat meat either. Just curious. Also Will, your, will you give your child the choice to eat? Meat? Okay, so I have been vegetarian for about seven years, six or seven years, something yeah, like that. I lost count. Um, as far as why I chose to become a vegetarian, first of all, growing up, I really was never a big meat eater anyway. I mean, I, I liked chicken and turkey, but as far as red meats go, I never really loved red meat. It kind of gave me weird vibes already. I yeah. just, I've never been into steak. I was never huge into burgers or anything like that. I just didn't like it. Um, and then we ended up watching a documentary called Food Incorporated. Food Incorporated. I think Food Inc. Is that or maybe. Food Matters. Food Matters. It was some documentary on Netflix when we first got Netflix. We were in college. Yeah. And it was that my fault because I was an exercise me. science major and I, I was binge watching like some food stuff. And I was like, Jess, you might really like this. And um, ever since then, she's been vegetarian. Yeah, yeah, it just, first of all, I mean, it's just, it broke my heart for the animals, truly. Yeah. Like, I, I seriously have cried just watching some of these documentaries of how they treat the animals. It's horrible. Yeah. And I just, I can't get over it. I can't get it out of my head. I don't mind when someone else is eating it, but I just, when I am looking at it, if it was on my plate, mm -hmm. I think of, a literal animal like right there like their muscles and their yeah. tissues and their veins and it just kind of grosses me out to be honest like for me to eat it personally um yeah I guess I'm gonna say that too it's so like, I I have always eaten meat and I still do um but 
it made me more conscious of eating ethically raised meat because you know they are animals and I think that they should just be raised more humanely mm -hmm. so I always buy organic uh, cage-free chicken or um, raised with uh, in a vegetarian diet you know just so they're not, not pumped with full of chemicals or steroids. steroids yeah. You know? So yeah, it was a little bit more expensive, but um, you know, I just feel more um, right with eating meat that way. Um, but you being vegetarian, I also I would say don't eat as much meat. I think my meals are more proportioned now. I don't eat a whole bunch of meat. I don't really eat red meat either. Um, and if you do. Yeah, you have tons of veggies and things yeah. with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there is actually another reason that kind of solidified vegetarianism for me. And I guess I'll throw this out there. I guess I could consider myself a pescatarian because I have been incorporating fish into my diet ever since I became pregnant. Yeah. Um, just because I want baby's brain to really develop and grow. And I know that she needs all of those omega-3 fatty acids and everything. So, um, but one thing that did solidify vegetarianism for me is that I didn't realize this before, but there are actually studies done showing that if you have certain blood types, meats or different foods actually react with your blood type in certain ways. And with any A blood type, I don't know if it, or is it negative blood type? I think I it's know. just, I think it's all A blood types. Um, our digestive system, it just doesn't work well with eating meat. And the best diet for a person with an A blood type is a vegetarian or plant-based diet. I don't think you ever told me that. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. So I did some research on that. Maybe, I don't know if it was when you were deployed or when. Yeah. Oh, no, it must have been right after I was pregnant. The first time. I don't know. But it is. So look it up, you guys. It's really interesting to read about. Um, but it makes so much sense because growing up, that's probably why I didn't eat a lot of meat. I had a lot of digestive issues growing up and I never felt good. I never felt healthy. I always felt yucky and just, I just felt sick a lot. And I, and once I became a vegetarian, I didn't feel that way anymore. I have never felt better in my entire life. And I don't see myself ever going back. Mm -hmm. um, just because why would I want to make myself feel yeah. sick? Um, as far as baby girl goes, of course, we're going to give her the option to eat meat. Um, well, she's not going to be able to make a choice for a long time. Well, yes. So, yes, we will be feeding her little pieces of meat, but I don't want to overwhelm it in her diet because I also don't know what blood type she is either. And that might have an effect on yeah, I mean, how we'll her see. digestion Yeah, is. she'll have her own choice. You know, yeah. like, well... Once she, once she's able to make a choice, then, you know, sure, hon, of course, you don't have to eat meat. But I also think that, you know, for her little body, I'm sure having a good amount of protein because she's building so much would probably be beneficial for her. Yeah, and it's something that we, we haven't really... But she can't even eat meat for a while, right? I don't... I don't no, know. I mean, not... It's something that we'll look into yeah. and research a little bit more. So the next question is, how did you meet... So we've actually covered this. Yeah, we've covered this a couple of times. We'll link the past video down below in the description box. But um, yeah, just quickly, we, we met in 10th grade at, in high school and we're friends uh, for uh, 10th and 11th grade. And then we started dating our senior year and have been together ever since. Yeah. How long have you and Chaz been married and did you get married in Florida? So we got married when we were 26 on April 2nd of 2016. And so we've been married, it'll be three years this April. Yep. And yes, we got married in Florida. We got married in Tallahassee. So okay. it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. We got married at this gorgeous white plantation style house with huge oak trees. It was beautiful. It was so yeah. gorgeous. Oh my gosh. And, and you did all the planning pretty much yourself because I was in South Dakota um, Still for the military, we weren't living together yet. So it was a long distance plan, but it turned out amazing. Yes. And this actually leads us into our next question <laughs> or questions. Wow. What was your wedding like? Would you share your wedding video with us or tell us more about the event? So we're not going to be able to share the wedding video itself just because it is copyrighted. We had a videographer come out and film everything and it's absolutely stunning. I wish we could share it with you. 
Um, we might be able to share bits and pieces eventually, but we did have a military wedding, and so there were a lot of people there in uniform, and yeah. just for privacy reasons and confidentiality with you know, everyone that was kind of involved in our wedding party and things like that. We That's probably right. won't be sharing yeah. that and the pictures with you guys, although I wish we could because they are so stunningly gorgeous. Our wedding was like a fairy tale. We had p blush pinks and navy blues and... Yeah, those are colors. It was too. like, oh, it was so gorgeous. But I'll try to find some things that I can share with you guys. So we did our wedding on the front lawn of a big white plantation style house underneath the oak tree and then we did the reception in the back of so the house was open you in actually, the house is where cocktail hour yeah was. cocktail hour you you had your own room upstairs um and then well the yeah the bridesmaids mm -hmm. had the entire upstairs of the house to get rid of it's such a beautiful house i mean it was probably from like it was called the southwood house in yeah. tallahassee florida I'll link it down below in case you guys want to check Beautiful. it out. It's gorgeous, but that's where we have it. And what's wedding. really cool is at, they had little small cabins on cottages. cottages at on the premises. So after the reception, you know, we just went back to the cottages for, you know, we didn't have to go far. Well, so our well, family yeah, did. Me and you went to a hotel. but Right. Yeah. So, so everybody our, could stay there. Or no, Nobody yeah. had to drive too far. Right. Yeah, that place was awesome. It was. It was mm -hmm. really beautiful. All right, what is your favorite thing to do as a couple? Hmm. Hmm. So something that we've done a couple of times that has been so much fun that I can't wait to do again when I'm not Prager's yeah. is zip lining. Is yeah. that what you were thinking? No, no. No. Oh. But that is awesome. Yeah, yeah. we've had so much fun zip lining, and we've zip lined in a couple of different places here in Florida. And then we also ziplined when we were on our honeymoon in, in Jamaica. Jamaica yeah. So cool. That, that was, was cool. so awesome. Yeah. yeah. Was it was awesome. kind of scary, like, because you're up so high. Mm -hmm. And it was, I don't think that one was a self-guided tour. But the one in Tallahassee is a self-guided. Yeah. It had more obstacles in it. It wasn't just pure ziplining. Mm -hmm. So you had to, like, actually, you know, do, like, a skateboard you know, on rails to the other tree. It was just, it was completely safe, but not as safe as like, like just a little bit unsafe to make you get like an adrenaline rush. Right. Yeah. But it was only because you had to hook and unhook yourself. yourself right? There were no guides. Up and you had there. to make sure that you're doing it correctly or you So fall you didn't off. fall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I think one of my favorite things to do as a couple is um, just to, like sit down and watch a show together. Yeah. And they just, you know, relax and just watch a show on the couch. Isn't he sweet? Yeah. <laughs> we definitely enjoy our downtime together. We sit down yeah. at least once a day and we just sit mm -hmm. face to face and we just talk. Yeah. And I think that's so important for relationships overall. And I think that's actually one of the other questions. Um, but like... Yeah, it is. What advice would you give to a dating and married couple? I feel like this could kind of tie right in with that because, you know, it's so important to have good communication skills in the relationship. And I think that's why we work so well together because we do sit down and we talk things out, even if there's something that we don't necessarily want to talk about or something that happened that day that we just need to vent. Um, yeah. You know, we try to sit down and... Don't bottle up your, like... The way that you're feeling if you don't like something then just say it because if you just don't acknowledge it it's just going to keep festering and then it's going to blow up into be something worse or mm -hmm. um yeah it'll eat you alive and you'll treat one person as, as like a, a differently you'll just treat that person differently so yeah and I, I just i think really good communication so i mean i'm no expert um but I would, just this past, uh, right before we left for the holiday break at work, we had our chaplain come and talk to us, and he was talking about marriage because he's certified in marriage counseling and talked about how women prefer to communicate looking face-to-face, eyes-to-eyes, and men, they, they did a study in a room where the women, they put two women in the room alone, and they moved close to each other and looked at each other head-on, whereas two 
men in the same room sat side by side with like a space in between them and they just they looked out this way and talked looking that way but to each other so it's just interesting oh, weird so we'd like yeah. yeah oh yeah guys do talk like that yeah. a lot yeah. interesting yeah. huh yeah i don't know but to for he said for the guy to take you know 10 minutes to talk to your wife in her preferred communication style and then for the female to do the same thing with your husband so just not look at you when I'm talking to you? Yep, look that way. <laughs> That's so weird. <laughs> no, I don't think I could do that. But kind of how we are now, or, or you know, walking. Right, but I'm you... like looking at you, even though you're talking. Right. But I'm looking at you. Right. Yeah. And I'm doing this interesting right now. Mm -hmm. But like go for a walk, because a man, you know, you're, you're looking straight ahead, you're doing something, and he's distracted doing something, so he... Let's his guard down, he said, and will actually communicate better. Or driving. Interesting. That was the chaplain's words, not mine. I don't know. Hmm. I just thought it was interesting. Okay, so there's your advice. <laughs> Good communication skills. Yeah. And actually, we have the book, The Five Love Languages. We haven't read it yet. That we haven't read, yeah. but we need to do that. Yeah. We started reading it together a long time ago, and we never finished it, so we need to do that. Yeah, we do. Yeah. This kind of leads right into the next question. What advice would Chaz give for significant others dating or marrying a teacher? Yeah, that's a really good question because um, teaching teachers are amazing, for one. I want to say that. Um, mm -hmm. And there's often a – they need help because they're not – there's too much to do. You know, for the amount that you guys get paid and you're trying to do so, so much for the kids – um, so I would often give you a break. So like I remember some nights in college where I wasn't doing anything. So, um, you know, I'd be watching football and you'd be trying to like be stressing out about grading papers or prepping some cutesy stuff. Like, Cutting things out of lamination. Yeah. So or, like I'd be like, babe, I'll, I'll take that. Stapling. So I, I would... I would sort, she would sort things. I'd just go and, and staple it or I would cut things out or, you know, I, I would go into the school. You would many come in times, on the weekends, on the weekends with on me. Sundays. Yeah. And now granted, week, this was like my first year, second yeah. year of teaching. But so. I, I found that, um, happy wife, happy life. So <laughs> if I could get you home and happier faster, um, you know, I would have more time to be happy. <laughs> yeah, we could be happy together. Yeah, and then we would have time to sit on the couch and talk. Yeah, yeah. Or Otherwise, was I was my mind was all teaching. Yeah, yeah. It was. Yeah. I will say that we have had a lot more time to spend together since I've not been teaching. Yeah. Um, but part of that is just my personality because I always I'm kind of an overachiever when it comes to stuff like that. So I always would just try to go above and beyond for every little thing that I would do for the kids in my classroom. Even in her sleep. In my sleep, I would talk to my kids and yeah. 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 It really was my entire life. And yeah. so. I, I would um, say, um, here's another thing that I would say from a, not a teacher to a teacher is um, find a balance between, you know, find that line to where you're going above and beyond because you, you know, you should because they're children and they need that all the help they can. But not don't go to the point to where you're you're hurting yourself. So mm -hmm. you have to find that that line to where you can, you know, do a lot of good cool things, but also take care of yourself. Right. Um, and Which is takes, where I was struggling. Yeah. There and at the end. I'm sure yeah. it takes a an experienced teacher. You know, I'm sure mm -hmm. it takes a while. Um, yeah. You know, I've seen some of the teachers at your school, and they're like, "All right, Jess, we'll see you." And we're just like, "How do they do it? How do they leave right at three <laughs> thirty? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. But yeah, I think that's great advice. Yeah, definitely be there for your spouse yeah. um, to help out, especially in those first few years if you're with them right in those early stages. It's all new to us in those early stages too, and we don't really know what to expect or how much work really to expect. And you're just – you're learning. It's a learning process again. Yeah. So. Um, the more patient the spouse is, patient, or the significant yeah. other is, the better we are. So, anyway, yeah. yeah. Good luck. Yeah.
Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of things coming home and staying home rather than going to the classroom. So <laughs> just know that. Don't do what I did. You'll have a lot of papers. <laughs> All right. Next one. What is your pet peeve about each other? Oh. Hmm. You can go first. Okay. The flare pins. Yeah, he's been leaving my flare pins uncapped, you guys. If you're a teacher, if you're a teacher, you know that those flare pins are like so amazing. And I yeah. just bought a whole new pack because he had dried out so many of my other ones. Those things are not cheap. They're like right. 25 bucks for a pack. Well, if there was other pens in the house, I'd use them, but they're well, all flare pens. So the new pens that I did buy for my planner, the colors that I'm using for my planner, I put in a separate cup and I hid it underneath. No way. The, yeah, see the cup down there on the drawer? Those are the ones that I don't want him drying out, so I had to put them in a separate spot. And my that's older how you know flare it's a pet pens. Peeve. Yeah, yeah, so that's my pet peeve. Yeah. He dries out my flare pens. Okay, you ready for yours? Yeah. All right, not putting a new roll of toilet paper <laughs> on the toilet paper roll. Yeah. Yeah, it's just... You I just, just set, set it on, on top. top. Yeah, I just set it on top. Yeah, so yeah. that's it. Aw, I'm sorry. Yeah, there's actually like three empty rolls in there right now. Mm, yeah. Actually, no, I did put a new one on, but only because my family was coming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. All right, so this one is, what was the most challenging thing during your husband's deployment and what is your advice? I'm about to experience mine being gone for a year here in a couple of months. So first of all, thank you guys both for your service. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's not just the active duty service member who is making sacrifices, it's the entire family. So we appreciate yeah. you as well. Mm -hmm. And the most challenging thing I think for me while Chaz was gone, it was hard for about the first month specifically just because it was something so new and I was mm. used to having him around all the time. And I don't like going to bed like without him because I don't know, I just have to make sure like everything is locked. I like triple check everything. I even lock myself in my bedroom just for security reasons. Mm. And I'm just really, you know, a security and safety nerd. I really am. You are. Um, so that was like really hard for me just not having him there because if something were to happen, he wouldn't be there to protect me. However, I did have Chief, so that made it easier. I will say that having a dog, if you have a dog, makes it a lot easier. And then about a month after he left is when I got our foster daughter. And so I had her there with me mm -hmm. for the remainder of the time. So that kept me very busy and kept my mind off of things. Um, my advice would probably be to make sure that you are staying busy with something, whether that is through work or with friends mm -hmm. or just with your neighbors. You know, if you have lady friends in your neighborhood that want to get together for a girl's night or just go out to dinner um, or just to have someone there to talk to. I yeah. mean, you need to make sure you're surrounding yourself with things that keep you busy because if not the time is really going to drag out yeah so do you have anything to add to that yeah i mean i I'd, I'd say try and find something new like a new passion to do with your your time I, I don't know if you have children or not but um if it's just you at the house just think about all of the that's that's you time to focus on something that maybe you want to learn how to paint or you want to take a, an online course to learn how to, you know, sell on Etsy or, you know, there's a lot of, of time that you can just focus on something that you want to do. And, um, also additionally, uh, send stuff to your husband. Like you send yes. me a lot of boxes, um, I mean, once little a, care packages yeah, once a month and you would decorate, decorate the inside of them so that when I opened up, it'd be like almost home and they were themed. Box of sunshine. Yeah. yeah I did a theme each month. Yeah. yeah. So those were really great for me to open. You know, I was really looking forward to those. Um, yeah, so. Yeah. And something else that I did for him before he left is I wrote a bunch of letters or oh, yeah. put a lot of things in envelopes. And it was like, open this when you are needing some extra, mm -hmm. you know, kisses. And then I had a piece of paper with lipstick kisses all over it. Or mm -hmm. there's a lot of ideas on Pinterest of what you can do. Um, but I would put pictures in there or anytime that he felt like he was missing home, he could open one of those letters. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so that was something kind of cool. Yeah. Too. Mm -hmm. Did you like those? Did you read all of those? I read them all. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And he would put the pictures up in his little yeah, room. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah, they were great. What is your religion? So we are Christian. Um, I would consider us to be non-denominational. Mm -hmm. We were both raised as Christians, but we were raised in different denominations. So I was raised Catholic. I was Episcopalian for the longest time, which is a very older denomination, you know, old school, similar to Catholic. Catholicism. Mm -hmm. um, and then you ended up going to a Methodist a church. A Methodist church, which was, and it was very contemporary, um, a, like a younger crowd. And that actually, there was a band playing. It was in a gym. There was beach balls going all over the place. So yeah. I remember, like, that was the first, I was, like, shocked almost, like, culture shock. Like, this is church? Wait. I was an altar boy. Um, I think we call it something different. But uh, I, I carried the Bible down. It was all quiet and um, going to the the beach party, pretty much. It was very different. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I got more from the the Methodist church. I could understand the message more uh, for the contemporary services. And then when we went to a, a new church in South Dakota, um, it was amazing church, non-denominational. And the, the way they interpreted the Bible and applied it to like your current real life situation mm -hmm. um, made a lot more sense to me. And to me, maybe I was just too young to get that of the Episcopalian church, but um, they need, it needs to relate to right what I'm doing today in today's like society and stuff. So Right. And my story is pretty similar. Mm -hmm. So I, again, was raised Catholic. My entire mom's side of the family is Catholic and when I got to eighth grade, where you're supposed to make your confirmation, I chose not to make my confirmation because I wasn't getting what I needed out of the Catholic Church. It didn't resonate with me. Like, I just, I didn't understand it. It was almost so scripted that it just didn't relate to me. Mm -hmm. And again, it could have been because I was young. Maybe I would feel differently now that I'm older. Yeah. Um, but when we went to our non-denominational church in South Dakota, it was, again, I mean, immediately the first time we went yes it was more contemporary and that was culture shock for me I was mm -hmm. like oh my gosh look at this is like a concert in here that was not at all yeah. was what I was used to um so I don't know it took me a while to get used to the atmosphere of it because I wasn't used to that but the messages mm -hmm. I mean I don't think I could ever go back to a more scripted you know yeah. style church but to answer your question Christian, non-denominational. Yeah. All right. And the last question is a really fun one. Do y'all know your Enneagram type? It's a personality test. So Chaz and I have taken multiple personality tests mm -hmm. over the years, and we actually had not heard of this one until this question came in. So thank you, Michaela. So when this question came in, we actually took the personality test or the Enneagram test, and we'll link it down below for you so you guys can see the one that we took. And we're going to share what we got. Yeah. So I took the test and I came up with type three, the achiever. So it says the type threes are success oriented, pragmatic, adaptable, excelling, driven, and image conscious. <laughs> threes are self-assured, attractive, and charming, ambitious, competent, and awesome. And that's awesome. Right. Yeah, so is that. It says awesome on there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> So mine came back as a type one, which is the reformer. This is really interesting. It says they have a strong sense of right and wrong. They are teachers, crusaders, and advocates for change, always striving to improve things, but afraid mm -hmm. of making a mistake. They're well-organized, orderly. They try to maintain high standards, but they can slip into being critical and perfectionistic. So that, is, I mean, I don't think I'm very critical, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> am I critical? Here's the thing. I am a perfectionist. It is true. It is true. But that makes me sound mean. I'm not mean. No. No. You're a perfectionist. But I am a perfectionist. Before we started filming this video, Chaz and my dad and my brother went to go grab groceries. And my mom and I were putting them away. And she said, oh, here, I don't know where you want these in the fridge. And I just said, oh, anywhere, just as long as they're in a straight line. Mm -hmm. I'm not even kidding. Like, like my stuff in my refrigerator has to be like in a straight line. I am very perfectionistic. It is true. Yeah. 
And so like Chaz will do things sometimes and I'll go behind him and straighten it <laughs> or fix it because mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm kind of particular yeah. about certain with some things. things. With some yeah. things, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another one that's dead on with this type is it says something about the list making. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that is you to a T. Yeah. It said mm -hmm. that, yeah, just very like organized and always making lists. Mm -hmm. That is very true. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I make lists for everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Every day on my to-do list, at the bottom of my to-do list, on my to-do list, I put make list for tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. So there's a list for a list. Yeah. Yeah. But type ones get things done. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah. We get mm -hmm. things done. I actually just watched a... It's if you if you look on YouTube, I'll try to link it down below. But um, it was a church's perspective on the different types, the oh. different enneagram types, and so I watched mine, and it was really interesting to see like where, you know, that kind of fit in with my life. So um, I meant to show you that. I didn't yeah. show that to you yet, but and then both of us actually got type two as our subtype, which is the helper. Type twos are really good at making connections, empathizing with other people. They're very caring. They're good at communicating, which we did talk about is something that's so important that we try to do. So that makes sense that mm -hmm. we actually both came back with that. Yeah, that was fun. So yeah, that yeah. was that was fun. The Enneagram test, I really enjoyed that. It was fun. Yeah. I always like those personality tests because I feel like um, I like feedback a lot. So like learning, reading something and you see something that they're describing is like, this is your personality. You'd be like, hmm, yeah, they're kind of right. I could probably improve on that is, um, you know, I'm constantly trying to get better. So, um, yeah, those tests are always really fun. So, yeah. yeah and helpful. They are. Yeah. So if you want to take it, the link is in the description below. Yeah. And yeah, so we really enjoyed all your questions. Hopefully we answered Thank them. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. Um, I, it's really, you know, fun to look back on our past and, and we're so glad you're interested in it. Yeah. Um, so hopefully you learned some more about us and, um, yeah, well, hopefully we'll do this again shortly. That's it for today. I can't believe Christmas is right around the corner. We already have family here and then mm -hmm. more family to come. We still got some Christmas presents to wrap and some cookies to make and all, all kinds of what? exciting Christmas yes. things. So, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, so definitely stick around, and we will see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.